This time on Filmmaker, we are looking at John Hughes, the official voice of the 80s. Hughes wrote more than 30 films, with 21 of those coming between 1982 and 91. But we aren't going to get to all of those. Instead, we're going to focus on the eight films that John Hughes directed. So, sorry, no Home Alone, Pretty in Pink, or National Lampoon, but there are still some all-time classics on the list, so let's count them down. Number eight. She's Having a Baby. This is Hugh's most grown-up film, but it's also the one that most misses the target. Hughes takes some risks here as he tries to look at what happens after the meet-cutes and the romantic weddings, and he does tiptoe into some tough territory with aimless 20-somethings in what looks to be a marriage doomed to fail, but it's all kind of sold out in the third act. It's a movie that you will mostly remember for the scene that accompanies that fantastic Kate Bush song. Song. And to be honest, that's probably the most effective part. Number seven, Curly Sue. Hughes's final film was a bit of a cookie cutter late 80s, early 90s family film, though it is honestly likable in a movies that you watched with your mom kind of way. The little girl manages to avoid most of the child actor pitfalls. She's actually pretty good. Jim Belushi is, well, he's Jim Belushi, and it has the classic feel-good rags-to-riches tropes with snooty waiters and jerky lawyers getting their comeuppance left to right. It's certainly is not world-changing, but it is as advertised. Number six, Weird Science. Now we get into the real John Hughes stuff, Anthony Michael Hall and all. Weird Science is one of those movies that could only exist in the 1980s. Unwanted house parties, an over-the-top horrible older brother, Mad Max bikers, a crazy wind that pulls somebody's clothes off, and, of course, bringing a supermodel slash genie to life using science. It admittedly starts as a teen boy's wet dream, but it does have a bit more depth than the premise would have you believe. Not oodles, but some. It also has a ton of scenes that were burned into my mind as a kid. Number five, 16 Candles. Maybe the most famous of the kind of sort of thematic trilogy that also includes Pretty in Pink and Some Kind of Wonderful. Though it has maybe aged the worst of the three. On the plus side, Hughes mainstays Molly Ringwald and Anthony Michael Hall are pretty close to their best in this one. And there are some truly classic, very memorable scenes. But... There are more bumps in the script than you remember, and the characters across the board have a lot more jagged edges than certainly I remember from watching this movie as a kid. Number four, Uncle Buck. This might be John Hughes' most underrated film. Uncle Buck is the classic Hughes formula and classic John Candy, a kind of loser character that maybe doesn't follow society's norms, but has a pure moral compass and a heart of gold. It also has solid performances from Amy Madigan and Laurie Metcalf, as well as Macaulay Culkin, who has no business having this good of comedic timing for a nine-year-old. It's the epitome of Hugh's knack for creating family films with a little bit of an edge. Number three, planes, trains, and automobiles. Easily Hugh's funniest film and one of the best comedies of the 1980s. Planes, Trains, and Automobiles is straight up comedy gold. Martin and Candy play off each other perfectly. Perfectly, with Martin as the hilariously, increasingly frustrated straight man and Candy as the lovable bumbler who has the best intentions but the worst results. It's a how-to book of physical gags and situational comedy starring two of the absolute best of all time. But what really puts it over the top is the heart and the colossal patience that Hugh shows in taking his time to peel away the layers to make the inevitable friendship feel truly earned, and the result is surprisingly moving. Number two, The Breakfast Club. Breakfast Club has become part of our cultural 
Fabric. It is the film that John Hughes is best known for, and every bit of that is earned. It's basically a play with five actors in one location for 90% of the runtime, which means that the writing and the acting had to be on point. And thankfully, everyone is more than up to the task. All five leads deliver fully embodying their characters. And as the walls begin to fall and the truth starts to bubble to the surface, it all works. Even the goofy dance scene, heck, especially the goofy dance scene, which is a testament to how much we're willing to go with these characters. Hughes put the reality of high school on the screen like nobody has before or since. Number one, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Maybe it's not as deep as The Breakfast Club or even Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, but Ferris Bueller is still the best. Sometimes a movie can just be fun, and Ferris Bueller's more fun than just about anything out there. There's a charm or a life or a something that certain 80s movies have that no other decade's been able to replicate. Back to the Future has it, Ghostbusters has it, Goonies has it, and Ferris Bueller has it. Matthew Broderick's a joy to watch. He's cool and cocky and smart. He loves his parents and lip syncs, twist and shout and parades. And it's kind of great that it turns out there isn't really another shoe to drop, but there doesn't need to be because he's got the perfect character foil in Cameron, who's one of my favorite characters in all of film. Cameron has a real meaningful and fairly heavy character arc that fits so perfectly into the joyous craziness around him. It's a balancing act that pays off in the little moments like in the pool scene or the climactic smashing of the car. I could talk about this movie for a whole video by itself and that's without even bringing up the Cameron Ferris fight club theory, which you should look into if you haven't heard of, but for my money, Ferris Bueller is the best. And that's it. I'm sure a lot of you grew up with these films like I did, and they're tied to your childhood. Or maybe you have just recently seen them for the first time. Either way, let me know what your top few are, and please like and subscribe, and hopefully I will see you all next time.